Paleontology is a weird field of science. Unlike many other fields that deal with natural phenomena, paleontology manifests itself in various ways. Put simply, there are academics who do a lot of quantifying, describing, publishing, etc. Then there are amateurs, who also do most of the same things as academics, but without the expensive paper. Then there are commercial folks, who prospect, excavate, prepare, and sell fossils. And then outside of all that, there are the science communicators who try to boil down the science so everyone can understand it. And finally, there is the pop culture side of things, a group of people that have coalesced around the label of paleontology enthusiast. These fine folks are just people who are into paleontology and think it's neat, but that don't necessarily do science, volunteer work, or anything like that, though many do. To make a long story short, there is an odd obsession with dinosaur size amongst mostly the amateur to enthusiast side of paleontology, most common online among the younger folk. Every so often, this size obsession wanders its way into the academic side of paleontology. Obviously, most researchers try to come up with a size estimate for the specimen they describe, and maybe also an average of a genus or species depending on the context. But I don't often see a ton of serious argumentation about the size of, you know, Therizinosaurus, Triceratops, or Tyrannosaurus among normal paleontologists. Who gives a crap if Tyrannosaurus was 40, 45, or 50 feet in length on average? You feel me? The argumentation has more to do with the specific math formulas or statistics used to come up with a size. Whether someone got a size in the right way. I suppose it also comes more into play when someone is forced to choose which dinosaur is the biggest. A fool's errand if you know the lore. The question of what the largest dinosaur was is silly for multiple reasons. First of all, many dinosaurs are known from one specimen only. That won't tell you an average, nor a maximum. If more than one specimen of a given dinosaur genus or species is known, then you have a better sample size to get an average. The more specimens you have, the better that gets. Tyrannosaurus is a great model organism here, because it's known from apparently as many as 84-ish specimens that are complete enough to contain specific traits that clearly identify them as Tyrannosaurus. That 84 number comes directly from the world-renowned paleontologist Philip Curry, and includes a whole bunch of Tyrannosaurus specimens that have been lost to private hands. I wane nostalgically for the days when that number was closer to 50, but alas, we must trudge forward. Tyrannosaurus had been considered the largest known theropod dinosaur for quite a few decades after it was first discovered in 1900 and described in 1905. Ironically, a handful of theropods of similar or slightly smaller size would be found in the subsequent decades but were fragmentary enough to the point that their size estimates were shaky. And also, no one knew about them? I'm mostly thinking about Spinosaurus. Its dustbin status helped in no way by the holotype's sudden demise by the hands of World War II. Acrocanthosaurus would come around in 1950 and eventually you got the South American Carcharodontosaurids. So, now Tyrannosaurus is generally considered one of, if not the heaviest theropod dinosaurs, with Spinosaurus potentially the longest, and Giganotosaurus and Mapusaurus being somewhere in there as well. Okay, cool, but like, I think the next question should be, what is the largest Tyrannosaurus? Based on all the known specimens, the largest and oldest so far known are Sue and Scotty. The most recent studies of Scotty touted the specimen as the largest known Tyrannosaurus, at an estimated 13.1 meters, 43 feet, and 8.8 .8 tons. Sue has been estimated at 12.3 to 12.4 meters, 40.4 to 40.7 feet, 8.4 to 14 tons. Sue is so close in size and a bit more complete than Scotty, 90% versus 70% respectively, that it's difficult to say who is truly bigger or longer. Well, that's sort of an answer. Is this the biggest that Tyrannosaurus ever got? Is Scotty and Sue the zenith of Tyrannosaurus size? Well, that couldn't possibly be true. The math wouldn't math. 
Paleontologist Jordan Milan and David Hone set out to see if math could prove how big dinosaurs could possibly be, using Tyrannosaurus as an example. Their work was just published in the journal Ecology and Evolution in July of 2024. In order to figure out how big a Tyrannosaurus could theoretically get, you may need to know the exact amount of Tyrannosauruses to ever live. Thankfully, this has already been estimated by Eva Griebeller in April 2023. She found that there were approximately 2.5 billion individual Tyrannosauruses that lived over the course of 2.4 million years at the end of the Maastrichtian age of the late Cretaceous. According to Milan and Hone, paleontologists have sampled around 0.000034% of all Tyrannosauruses to ever live. It would therefore be highly mathematically implausible that the largest possible Tyrannosaurus has already been found. Chances are much better that the largest individual never even made it into the fossil record. Figuring out the largest a species can get, aside from being cool and satisfying the size queens, can benefit the understanding of how much space the species occupied in its ecological niche. Another benefit is that the upper limit of body size for a given species can tell you something about the evolution of the species. Perhaps they got bigger over time. All of that can help bolster the study of limits in animal body sizes. Can things get bigger? To start, Malone and Hone had to model a population of Tyrannosaurus. To get to that, they estimated the size of all specimens with a femur, since you can get an idea of body mass from the circumference of the femur. This is great because not all specimens are complete, so using a femur increases the sample size. Once they got the sizes, they plotted the growth of Tyrannosaurus. Then, the team needed the population number. The 2.5 billion estimate was the median value of Eva Griebeler's study, with a lower median estimate of 140 million. Milan and Hone went with the lower number to make things easier. The next variable is the growth curve of Tyrannosaurus itself. There were more immature animals around at any one time than fully mature ones, and the immature ones died off way quicker. The immature animals had a period of slow growth, then there were a few years of extreme growth, which then hit a plateau beyond 25 years of age. This gave the Milan and Hone paper a survivorship probability. Next up, the team had to account for errors in size. Body size variation changes depending on egg size, genetics, and environment. Due to the relatively small sample size, they had to use data from the American alligator. Despite being more distantly related to Tyrannosaurus than birds, it shares more variables with it for this type of study. With all that done, they got these two graphs. 140 million Tyrannosauruses of varying ages generated based on known data of Tyrannosaurus specimens of varying ages and sizes with help from gators. This graph is assuming Tyrannosaurus had little to no sexual dimorphism, while this graph assumes sexual dimorphism. These populations were sampled again to get an idea of uppermost body size percentiles, which will help to find a good general estimate of largest possible Tyrannosaurus. The two graphs are no sexual dimorphism versus sexual dimorphism again. Before I get into the precise results, let me just give you an idea of just how dang difficult it is to answer which is the biggest. As Malone and Hone state, taphonomic and collector biases ensure that skeletons are rarely complete. In other words, things are rarely complete because bodies and their skeletons are torn apart by the environment before they can fossilize. Either they don't ever make it to fossilization, or get so torn apart that only a handful of irreparably damaged bones get fossilized. Collector bias refers more to any bias a collector may have, consciously or otherwise. Only wanting to collect the biggest and most impressive specimens, only collecting specimens from a certain area, etc. These variables ensure that specimens rarely overlap with one another in bones. You may find a T-Rex maxilla in one spot, then a femur at another spot five years later. This is only in the realm of paleontology. If we shift the focus to biology, and by definition, whatever the hell was going on with these things when they were alive, things get exponentially worse. Body size within a species can vary dramatically between different populations through sexual dimorphism, island endemism, or evolutionary pressures within a single population. Animals can also change size over their lives or seasonally. Oy vey. 
Malone and Hone provide an example in the American alligator because they use its data for T-Rex. Okay, so around 72,760 gators have been recorded from 1977 to 1994. About 0.01% of them were over 4 meters. The biggest of these was a 4.27 meter beast from 1989. These were all Floridian gators, but bigger ones have been found in other states. The difference in population I mentioned earlier. An Alabama gator from 2014 was 4.5 meters. Math formulas suggest that, considering a population estimate of 3 to 4 million living individuals, some may exist out there of 5 to 5.1 meters. Plenty of reports of super gators have been made, but with really shady data or none at all. These reports vary from 5 to over 5.2 meters. None of this considers gators from before 1977. Maybe the largest gator to ever live died in 1789. So, with all that delicious information down your gullet, the first question to be answered is what is the likelihood of having already found or someday finding the largest T-Rex? If the population of Tyrannosaurus is closer to the higher 2.5 billion estimate by Griebler and there is a discovery rate of 0.694 skeletons a year, then Milan and Hone found that it may be another 20 years or so before Tyrannosauruses are found from the 99.9th percentile of all Tyrannosauruses and 1,000 years before the largest ever Tyrannosaurus is found. I sure do hope humans will be around still looking for these things a millennia from now. Cool, now we can get to the reason you are here. How big could Tyrannosaurus Rex possibly get? Given all the caveats and the possibility for error in any scientific paper, Milan and Hone found that the largest T-Rexes in 140 million possible T-Rexes were 14 tons. For 2 billion T-Rexes, they got between 12 and 16 tons, 16 tons being 70% larger than Scotty. Therefore, Milan and Hone are confident that much larger specimens than the largest known, Scotty or Sue, once existed. They calculate that a 16-ton individual may have had a femoral circumference of 715 millimeters or 28 inches, which the authors state is only seen in sauropod dinosaurs. This theoretical giant 16-ton beast may have been as much as 15 meters or nearly 50 feet in length. Milan and Hone briefly talk about how their findings compare with the possible largest size a bipedal animal can get, but there is so little actual literature on the topic that they can't really reach a conclusion. Some work has been done on the stresses and strains of quadrupedal giants, specifically of the Chicago Brachiosaurus, indicating 19 tons of weight per leg, which is higher than the total body mass of the biggest T-Rex in this study, and also doesn't compute well with T-Rex being a biped. One possible implication Malone and Hone found is that Tyrannosaurus may not have had strong physical sexual dimorphism. At least not like what is seen in gators. Gators have big males and small females. If the largest size estimates are anywhere near reality, then sexually dimorphic T. rexes that are like gators would have males far larger than the supergiant estimate, making them even less likely to be able to even exist. That being said, this says nothing about the dinosaur having sexual dimorphism in other traits besides body size. Gators are weird in that respect anyways. So, Malone and Hone conclude that Tyrannosauruses within the 99th percentile of body size have been found, with the largest possible Tyrannosaurus being nearly 70% bigger than the largest currently known specimen. The largest possible Tyrannosauruses existing in the 99.9th percentile either never fossilized or may likely never be found. The team also made sure to end their study off on a nuanced note. There is no real hyperbole here because the largest possible dinosaurs will most likely never be found. Comparing the largest members of a species ignores the many variables that control for body size. And there is nothing philosophically new about this. Everyone kind of always assumed super elders must have existed for any dinosaur species. After all, we sort of see these types of individuals in animals today. Though, not according to the statistics, of course. Just imagine a titanic T-Rex an elder who has seen many battles. They can no longer rely on nimbly hunting down unwitting prey that they stalked for hours. Instead, they desperately travel from carcass to carcass and take down the biggest prey animals incapable of making hasty retreats. Maybe an animal of the 15 meter cap would have had to resort to cannibalism. 
who knows. Now I'm getting into fan fiction-y speculation. Let's get out of here before I keep on blabbering. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Mm-hmm.